Ever since the summer of punk happened in 2011, there have been a lot of lies and a lot of false truths really spread surrounding the summer of punk. Now, the summer of punk, if you listen to YWC creators, if you listen to wrestling, Twitter, Reddit, what have you, you're made to believe that the summer of punk captivated and enthralled a bunch of disenfranchised WWE fans and WWE fans who'd left in the 2000s because of Cena came back in droves and became captivated once again because of CM Punk's edgy pipe bomb shoot promo on June 27th, 2011. That's what people would lead you to believe. People would lead you to believe that because of CM Punk's pipe bomb promo, hundreds of thousands, if not, well not millions, but like upwards of a million people, just hundreds of thousands of disenfranchised you know, 18 to 49 fans tuned back into wrestling. CM Punk, he was that voice of the voiceless. He was anti-Cena. He really drew, you know, captivated the millions. But in reality, I've been doing a bit of research lately. And this research surrounds, well, two main things. The ratings in 2010, 2011, 2012, etc. So there's the ratings. And the other thing I've been doing is looking at Oh, I don't know. Just the summer of punk with retrospect. Because a few weeks ago marked the 10-year anniversary of the pipe bomb. And I wasn't just going to make a, a, um, a video on June 27th praising the pipe bomb. I thought, there's probably a better way of going about some summer of punk content. Now, those of you who know me and know my wrestling story, supposedly, I started watching wrestling in the midst of the summer of punk. I began watching wrestling, I've been over this story a bunch of times, but basically I see a, a video or just footage on the WWE experience of Matt Stryker where CM Punk is reading a text message sent to him by his sister and it surrounds Kevin Nash. So, see, the Summer of Punk was my introduction to wrestling, it's what got me into wrestling, but really when it comes to the Summer of Punk with retrospect, there's a lot of lies and a lot of false truths with it. So, l l let's start off by looking at this, okay? I'll set the scene for you. WWE, in the first half of 2011, ratings-wise, they're drawing anywhere between about a 3.1, upwards of a 3.8. Now, the 3.8s, they're drawing them at the height of WrestleMania season. You've got The Rock, you know, The Rock's back. You've got the, you know, the height of the build of Mania. You've got Taker and Triple H. You've got a bunch of WrestleMania stuff. So, yeah, fair enough. They're getting 3.8s at WrestleMania season. All cool. That equates to like high fives as far as million viewers, like near enough 6 million viewers, you're pushing that. So yeah, that's what that's the kind of ratings they're getting there. Then we transition into April, post WrestleMania 27. The ratings go down a bit. They're getting 3.2, 3.1, 3.1 again. So they're getting okay ratings. You're looking at like 4.5 to like 4.9-ish million viewers around the April time period. So that's really good. Then in May, ratings take a, a real step forward. Ratings for WWE Raw in May of 2011, really good. 3.3, 3.4, 3.4, 3.7, which was the, the Macho Man tribute show, and 3.4 million viewers again. So ratings in May, WWE are drawing well and truly in the 5 million viewer like category. It's well and truly upwards of you know, 5 to 6 million viewers. You know, interest is there. And you look at what was generating interest at that time. What were WWE doing in May of 2011? We had like an over the limit show. There was like a capital punishment show they were starting to build towards. The main storyline on the show was John Cena feuding with The Miz and John Cena feuding with R Truth. What else did we have going on at this time on Raw? We had The Miz and Alex Riley beginning a beef. Um, we had CM Punk and Rey Mysterio having some good matches. I mean, like, what else was there? We had random great matches like Evan Bourne versus Jack Swagger. We had Eve and Kelly Kelly versus the Bella Twins. We had Alberto Del Rio addressing Big Show's accident. Dolph Ziggler versus Kofi Kingston. That stuff was getting WWE the 3.4s, the 3.5 million viewer numbers in the ratings. That stuff there, with Cena vs. R-Truth as the main thing on the show, was getting WWE upwards of nearly 6 million viewers at that time period in May of 2011. 
And then we transition into July, oh sorry, into June, June 13th, 3.3, June 20th, 3.1, then June 27th, the infamous Pipe Bomb episode in Las Vegas, they do 3.1 million viewers. Fair enough, Punk's Pipe Bomb was the last five minutes of the show. All good, all good. Then the next week, it's American Independence Day, it's July 4th, ratings tank, 2.4 for a rating. Meh, who cares, American Independence Day. Then, this is the stretch I want to really focus on, okay? This is the apex of the summer of punk. This is a time period in which CM Punk is on absolute fire. He's feuding with John Cena for the WWE Championship. You've got Triple H involved. They're literally a month, in, like in the month build up to SummerSlam. Let me read you the ratings WWE, WWE Raw got from the go home to, to Money in the Bank 2011 right through until SummerSlam 2021. Let me let me read you these numbers. 2.9, 3.2, 3.2, 3.3, And then on August 22nd, they did a 2.97. Okay. Now, by comparison to what they get nowadays, damn good ratings. These viewerships are about four to five and a tick million viewers. But that's not the point here. The point here is that for the better part of a decade, we've had the IWC creators, people push the agenda, push the narrative, push the notion that CM Punk's pipe bomb drew all these disenfranchised viewers back from the 2000s, all these ruthless aggression era fans who loved the hardcore action and turned off because Cena was too goofy, all these fans tuned back in in droves. But in reality, WWE in May of 2011, which featured a main event scene of Cena vs. R-Truth, Cena vs. Miz, and Punk vs. Mysterio, in that time period they're drawing 3.4s and a 3.7 and 3.3s, and then you fast forward two months to the summer of Punk, a time period which is supposedly a wrestling boom, a time period where wrestling is taking off, it's more popular and it's more mainstream relevant than it's ever been, and WWE is drawing 2.9 on the go home show to Money in the Bank. They're drawing 3.2 on the post show to Money in the Bank. They're drawing 3.1 on an episode which features a contract signing between CM Punk and John Cena where the WWE Championships are sitting in the middle of the table, you've got Triple H at the contract signing. For that show, they draw 3.1 million viewers. That was the August 8th, 2011 episode. For, for as far as viewership, that's 4.54 million viewers, which once again, it's three times the viewership they get nowadays, but compared to everything in 2011, not the greatest rating. And furthermore, let's go on cage side seats now and have a look at this. So this is a, a bit of analysis from August 9th, 2011, surrounding this rating. So... Cage side seats, the article here reads, All this during a time when fans have supposedly been re-energized by CM Punk's character, turned into the anti-establishment you know, character, and his having become today's version of a 1998 Stone Cold Steve Austin. Apparently, he's not as hot as we would all like to think, which is unfortunate too, because someone will have to be the fall guy, and if Punk is truly the hottest act in the company, which he undoubtedly is and was, then he's the one who will be held responsible here. Add in the fact that Triple H is returning to TV in an active role and what have you. Raw's ratings aren't necessarily a reflection of how SummerSlam will draw the box office, but it's not a good indicator of sustained interest built on the massive success of Money in the Bank. So, this article alone, this was written August 9th, 2011. This is amidst the summer of Punk, a time period where WWE is supposedly setting the world alight. The summer of Punk ratings are supposedly the best they've been in years. They weren't. They weren't a 3.09, keeping in mind two months prior when the best thing on the show was Cena vs. R-Truth, and that was what we were getting every week on Raw, we were getting 3.4s or 3.5s, and they were getting 5 plus million viewers. So you see my point here, you see my point with the summer of Punk, okay, CM Punk, the Pipe Bomb promo was a great promo, arguably the best promo ever, but really what it did, in the short term, there was no boost in ratings, okay? There was no substantial jump boost in ratings. As far as what it did in the short term, the CM Punk Best in the World t-shirt, you know what I'm talking about, that shirt sold well, and WWE had a bit more, like, buzz online. But does that correlate to TV ratings? Did that correlate to WWE experiencing an uptick in ratings? It didn't. 
And can that be what's held responsible for CM Punk never main eventing a WrestleMania? Quite possibly. If, C if Cena vs Miz and everything involving that gets higher numbers than stuff involving Cena and Punk, WWE ought to believe that, okay, either Miz is a bigger draw than Punk or Cena's just a draw and whoever Cena wrestles, that's the guy. That's the go like, this is my whole point. The Summer of Punk... It delivered some amazing, like, wrestling content. It was objectively, like, cool stuff, but it wasn't reflected in ratings. Okay, Punk had supposedly the hottest anti-establishment character since 1998 Steve Austin, but that wasn't drawing in viewers. Ratings in May of 2011 compared to July and August of 2011, like, July and August were down, like, substantially, for the most part. Like, it's a noticeable drop in ratings, and that's a two-month time span. So... I feel like this should really be taken on board, and add into that fact, something else that, I mean, I, I feel we should mention this, because of what's happened in the recent years surrounding one Alberto Del Rio, or now as he's known, Alberto El Patron, WWE can't even really mention the Summer of Punk now. Because if you're mentioning the Summer of Punk, you're mentioning a guy who's been well, arrested, a guy who's had a number of charges against him in Del Rio, and WWE don't really want to mention that for their own PR. So, with that said, they can hardly even mention the pipe bomb because of Del Rio, and even when they do mention it, there's a false truth to it. The, the ratings weren't through the roof. Like, it wasn't reflected in ratings. TV ratings for the pipe bomb in that summer punk time period were down, and for some shows, quite substantially. They were getting 5 to 6 million viewers in April and May, and then in July and August, for the most part, they're getting four to five million outside of a couple of shows so that's gonna be the video hope you guys enjoyed if you have be sure to like comment subscribe, and a drill see ya